Do I got somebody in the house who got a testimony? Come on, don't fool me now. If you know the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way, through seen and unseen danger, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I'm still here because I got a testimony. Look at that neighbor, tell him, I don't look like what I've been through. Truly it says that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. Oh, come on. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Somebody ought to clap your hands. All of you people, shout with the voice of triumph. Come on. You could be dead in the mortuary, but you're alive in the sanctuary. You ought to give the Lord a praise. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord when I pick up the goodness of Jesus. Come on, look at that neighbor. Tell him I still got a memory. And my memory is why I have a testimony. Because he brought me from a mighty long way. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You all got to praise. You all got to praise. You're still here. You're still alive. You made it through it. The enemy is under your feet. You all got to praise. He dwells in the midst of praise. You expecting God to do something small in your life, then give him a small praise. But I don't know about you. I'm expecting a big God to do something big in my life. Because a big God yeah. is deserving of a big praise. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He dwells in the midst of praise. My Bible Thank tells me that Lord. he inhabits the praises of Thank his people. You, and you ought to let your Hallelujah. praise shift the atmosphere. You ought to Hallelujah. let your praise shift. Thank you, Lord. Because there's a shifting in the atmosphere. Don't get it twisted because behind every church face is a challenge. Behind every saintly smile is oftentimes a struggle. Yes, Lord. Struggle doesn't differentiate from me to you, but all the way down from the pulpit to the pew. Yes. The Bible says we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Yes, and so he feels how we feel. He knows what we know. He can deliver us as we go. Yes. We all have a struggle. Some of us spray it with Givenchy. We yes. perfume our pain. We mask it with makeup. But the Lord knows how we look, really look, yes. and how we really feel. Yes. Right. Yes. Today, you don't have to take anybody's hand. All you have to do is hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yes. So we have a word of prayer. God's word can go where you can't. He can touch what you should keep your hands off of. Amen. And surely this morning, as I was musing and meditating about what to pray before the message, I thought about the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. yes. Uh, found in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and the record suggests that uh, she didn't touch Jesus, but she touched something that was touching him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't touch H I M, but she touched the H E M, the hem of his garment. And his word delivered her. Jesus, you don't need the centurion soldier said, Jesus, you don't even have to step into my house. Just speak the word. Amen. And my servant shall be healed. As you look down your aisle, as you look down your row in your pew, you're looking at what a miracle looks like. Ooh, this is what a miracle looks yeah. like. Yeah. You're looking at somebody who was left for dead, who was written off, who was told what they never be, what they never oh, overcome. Oh, but they're here because they touch Jesus. Ah, yeah. uh, yes, you may never be able to get into the White House, but I came into the church house. With a praise on my lips. You're looking at somebody who may not have a million dollars in the bank, but they have a relationship with the Lord that money cannot buy. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, they're still here. And so don't just pray for yourself, but pray for that neighbor. Pray for that brother and that sister. Good and gracious God, kind and gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to say thank you. Uh, God, we want to exalt, we exult, we magnify, we macrograph your marvelous matchless and majestic name uh, because Jesus you are the nexus you are the connecting force between God and man and Lord before we ask you for anything we just come to thank you for everything because Jesus you are our peace our praise our presence and our power and 
So we give you the right to move until you get through. Speak until we know it's you. We don't just come to praise you because it's convenient. But we come to praise you because you've been consistent in our lives. Morning by morning, new mercies we're able to see. So let my tongue be as the pen of a ready writer to write upon the tablets of the hearts of your people. We're claiming joy today. We're claiming strength in the life of my brother. We're claiming a breakthrough in the life of my sister today. God, don't just give us information, but give us revelation. Yeah, yeah. Give us transformation for restoration by your spirit. Don't just deliver us, but heal us. Uh, make us whole. Don't just uh, uh, visit us today, but inhabit us. For your word declares that you inhabit the praises of your people. And so we praise you for what you will do in the life of my brother. We praise you. For what you will do in the life of my sister. God, we don't only want to thank you for what you've done today. But we got a reason to thank you for what you didn't do. We want to thank you for the house we did not lose. We want to thank you for the child that did not drown. We want to thank you for the accident that did not happen. We want to thank you because we were not diagnosed with that disease. We want to thank you for the plane that did not crash. We want to thank you for the sickness that we did not have. We want to thank you for the job we did not lose. We want to thank you for the house that did not burn down. We want to thank you for the loved ones that did not die. Oh, we just come to praise you for all that you've done for us. Now let your people be edified. The devil horrified and your name glorified in Jesus' name. Now give God a praise all over the house. Come on, I want to praise you. Not just for what you've done, but I got a reason to praise you for what you did not do. I want to praise you for what you did not do. Uh, you're worthy of all the praise. He didn't leave you. He didn't forsake you. He didn't walk out on you. He didn't turn his back on you. And I got a reason to praise him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same sun. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. I come to clap my hands. I come to stop my feet. Amen. Amen. We truly do thank the Lord today for his love and saving power. Uh, just introduce yourself to somebody. Give them a holy hug, a high five, three snaps of the neck roll, whatever you got to do. Uh, tell them your name may be Jane, but you won't leave the same way you came. My name is Eddie, but right about now, I'm ready for a move of God. He's worthy of all of our praise today. Somebody give the Lord another praise all over the house. Just a great honor today just to give the Lord great praise and deference and respect to the ministers and the angels of this house. And we give God praise, especially for the legacy of this great church and ministry, Amen. Uh, which Amen. is built on the foundation of your founding pastor. Yes. That being the indubitable, the indomitable, and the inimitable, Reverend Dr. John H. Jordan. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Come on. You ought to give God praise. For leader, we laid the foundation. We give God praise for him. We thank God for to Reverend uh, Tyrone Rayford. Amen. 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 Somebody give God praise for him. All those in protocol, all those I don't know to call, the Lottie Dottie and everybody. Uh, to these uh, incredible praise uh, chorale. Amen. Give God praise for the choir. These great ministers of music. We thank God for them. Listen, I need you to do two things for me today. First, I need you to pray for me as I bring this word. And, and secondly, uh, just, just do this for me. Just lean over and nudge somebody. Just nudge your neighbor. Uh, tell them how much they owe you for allowing them to sit next to you. Uh, come on, tell them you owe me $50. You owe me $100. In addition to your tithe and offering, you better recognize who you sit next to. I'm a gift to somebody, even if I'm just a gift to myself. You may not want to embrace me, but you can't repeal and replace me. I'm, I'm a gift. Your hookup is right here. You sit next to your blessing. Amen. Laughter's medicine. I got to give you a dose. And if there is a word from the Lord, 
because at this day and time we need more than just uh, information but we need revelation for every situation so i call your uh, attention to a familiar passage of scripture in the book of matthew matthew's gospel chapter uh, 14 book of matthew chapter 14 and i brought some material with me that i know will bless you there's 66 books in the Bible. I've only written 14 of my own, so i got a long way to go. Um, but I'm a living witness uh, that your test is a testimony. Your misery is ministry. Your mess is a message. Your stumbling block is a stepping stone. And God will do is he will use your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. Well, I got somebody in here. You sung about it. I got a testimony. But I got some real people who got real testimonies in here. It's more than a song. It's this. It's literally my life story. Yeah, it is. My life. Oh, man, I, I don't look like what I've been through. Your, uh, God will use your tragedy as strategy to move your life to the next level because 2023 marks 23 years of me being cancer free. Yes, yes. Come on, you ought to praise God for that. Yes. He had to move the color purple on the screen in here. I tell you, just like Sophia, all my life, Come on. I had to fight. Do I got some folks you fought through the storm, you fought through the rain, the trials, and the pain, and I uh, went through uh, chemotherapy, radiation. My own biological father never visited me one day in the hospital. People I thought were praying for me were literally praying on me. Sitting on the sideline expecting my demise. I'm grateful for a praying mama. Thank you, Lord. My mama Thank prayed you. for me, had me on her mind, took the time to pray for me, and said, You got to go to Psalm 118 and 17, which says, You shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And so I've got I've got some books in here that I know will bless you. We, these are right in time for Mother's Day as they come in. Uh, these books are for every woman and also the men who love them. It's a two-volume set. Dear Queen, uh, Queen means quintessentially unique, empowering everyone naturally. All right. Real queens don't compete, they collaborate. Real queens ain't chasing no man, they're focused on their purpose and plan. Right. Real queens understand that their royalty demands loyalty. As a result, they wear their crown and they build their queendom in the kingdom of God. Uh, every brother can recognize uh, that, that he knows he's a king because he got a queen by him. A queen birthed up. Come on, every queen ought to give another queen a hair flip, a high five, three snaps and a neck roll. Tell her, you go girl. You all had the bag of Bibles. You all had the skirt and scriptures. You better go on with your bad self. So dear queen, jewels of wisdom to love yourself and know your worth. And then my volume two, dear queen, uh, how to wear your crown, walk in authority and authenticity. So I'll be signing copies. I'd love to sign copies for you at the conclusion of the service for Dear Queen Volume 1 and 2, and then I need you to save the date for Saturday, August 5th. Somebody just holler August 5th. August 5th. August 5th, there's going to be an incredible conference going on right here in the city of Detroit. It's called the Access Identity Conference. I'm your visionary and your host, and it's all about ideas, impact, and income, connecting the kingdom and the community. Right. we got to know how to occupy until we come. And that's yeah. in faith, that's in business, that's in relationships. That's a community development, so it's going to be all at the Focus Hope Conference Center, and you can get registered right now. The information not even coming out till Tuesday, but y'all blessed and highly favored to get it today. Amen. So I need you to go right now to accessidentity.org after this service. I want you to register. I want you to bring and tell a friend to tell a friend. Bring somebody with you uh, because it's all about empowering us and walking in our identity in Christ www.accessidentity.org Amen. If you have uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 28, holla, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Is this mic going to be alright for me? Yeah. Is this mic going to be alright? Amen. Matthew chapter 14, verse 28, and Peter said, Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Yeah, yeah. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I want to tag this text with this title. Just look at somebody and say, I'm getting ready to do. 
what's never been done. Now look at another neighbor, tell them, keep on walking. Come on, look at somebody else, tell them, keep on walking. That's what we're going to do, keep on walking. I, right, you can be seated. I open with a thought that the most dangerous and a precarious place you can be in life is not when you're walking on water, but when you're staying in the boat. The boat is a place of comfort, but the, the water puts you into unknown and uncharted territory. The boat doesn't sink because it's on the water. The boat sinks because too much water gets into the boat. Um, our life doesn't sink because we see fear. Uh, our life sinks when we begin to live in fear. And my brothers and sisters today, you have to understand that this walk with God to walk by faith is not comfortable. It calls you uh, to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, God is calling us today to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And be uncomfortable with being comfortable. Have I lost you? In order to shake us out of our comfort zone, he has to upset the equilibrium. He has to upset the climate of our circumstance in order to shift us into a new dimension. Amen. I know y'all ain't saying nothing today. Y'all don't uh, sound like Alice in Wonderland. I can hear a rat licking ice in his house. The blessing comes when you step into uncharted territory. And I came to issue a, a double dare today. I came to be not just a preacher, but your agitator. I double dare you this year to do something different. In order to do that, you have to literally feel the winds of fear and fury and frustration. And be brave enough to say to every storm, peace. Be still. Come on, I just wish somebody would just holler peace. peace. I just wish you just put up two fingers because it's not just saying I got peace, but I got victory. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the winds, the howling winds, the winds of worry may howl. The tempestuous the trials of life may sway your steps, but you got to keep walking on the water. Uh, the master will empower you to complete your mission despite the opposition. I just came to prophesy to somebody today and just encourage you to feel the fear and write the book. Amen. You got to feel the fear and launch your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to feel the fear and start the conference. Yeah. You, you, you may struggle, but it's going to make you stronger. You always miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. But you got to understand today that if God be for me, who in the world can be against me? And I came with a living witness word today that when God is for you, the who doesn't even matter. Right? Because God will be your source of strength in times of weakness. I got news for you that storms don't just come when you're out of the will of God. But sometimes storms come when you're in the center of of the will of God. Sometimes the devil has you right where God wants you to be. And yes, what God will do is he will use the storm to draw you closer to him. To uh, Yes, and, and build your water walking faith. I, I don't know about you, but I don't walk by sight. I walk by insight. I, I walk by faith because faith is insightful. Faith is a revelation. And hear me, when you receive a revelatory word from God, the human responsibility is not to be idle, but to walk on the word and work your purpose. Uh, look at somebody and tell them, you got to walk on the word and do the work. Uh, Y'all don't want to say nothing. Y'all don't want to say nothing. See, we don't we don't like the word work. Yeah, the word work seems to be a cuss word. But but look at somebody and tell them you too gifted to be broke. 
You you too gifted to remain afflicted. You too gifted to let the devil run up and down in your mind and in your house. You too gifted, uh, yes, gifted to let the devil run your life. It's time to do what's never been done before. To go where you've never gone before. Yes, I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to do what's never been done before to go where I've never gone before. Hear me? If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. It's time to do what's never been done before so you can receive what you've never had before. Do you just shake yourself? Just, I'm shaking myself out of lethargy. I'm shaking myself out of procrastination. I'm shaking myself out of I'm going to quit. I'm shaking myself out of the enemy keeping me depressed and afflicted and conflicted and oppressed and, and repressed. I'm getting ready to move my life to the next level. I'm, I'm going to preach this thing today. I'm headed to the mountain today. My body's on the way. If you have sight but no vision, you're still blind. Uh, yeah, I got these glasses on, and I'm, I'm on my four four eye folks. Yeah, I got my glasses on. My glasses don't give me sight; they enhance my sight. I can see the clock, but I can't make out everything on it because my glasses don't give me sight; they enhance my focus, and focus now enhances vision. See, we want to see it before we see it before we ever seize it. But God wants you to focus by faith so that he can now cause you to see beyond what you see to transform your reality. You got to get a picture of your future. Uh, look at somebody and ask them, have you seen anything yet? Oh yes, have you seen your vision? Have you seen your purpose? Have you seen your power? You've got to get a picture of your purpose. Dr. Miles Monroe said, vision is purpose in pictures. And when you get a future that aligns you with the word of God, you can tell the devil, no, this ain't the vision God showed me. Uh, I got to delete that out of my mind. I got to cast things that are uh, casting imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Because heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will stand forever. And when I stand on a firm foundation, when I stand on the word of God, despite the vicissitudinous trials and storms and trials and tribulations and tempestuous temptations, I have victory despite the winds of worry and the waves that want me to waver. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. I may bend, but I'm not going to break because I've got an unbreakable spirit that's on the inside of me. I've got to believe that if I get out of this boat, there's a blessing waiting for me on the other side. Uh, hold that organ one minute. I'm almost there. I got a little bit more work to do. I brought my lunch pail today. Um, the, the story goes that three ministers were fishing in a boat. One guy asked the other, is there any bottled water on the boat? He, he was told that it's in the car. So the guy gets out of the boat, walks on the water, and over to the car. And so the second guy sees it. He says, well, where are the sandwiches? He was told that the sandwiches are in the trunk. So like the first guy, he steps out of the boat, walks on the water, and over to the car. Now the third minister is sitting in the boat when the other two have already left. He's scratching his head. Uh, and he's got his hand under his chin and said he, uh, he's just astonished at what he witnessed. He thinks to himself, I got faith too. I got faith to walk on water too. And he steps out, he immediately falls in the water. And the other ministers walk back from the car and laugh at their friend who's soaked in there. As they all get back in the boat, their friend said, uh, who fell in the water, how did y'all both walk on the water? <laughs> And the guys laughed and said, well, you see, there's a trail of rocks on the side of the boat uh, over there under the water. And you got to understand, brothers and sisters, yes, there's truth in humor that everything is not 
as it seems. And what you got to do is you got to check the foundation first. You can't compare what somebody does to diminish who you are. Ah, yes. You don't always have to carve out your own path. Just follow the trail that God has prepared. And the reason this ministry is alive today, the reason this church, uh, yes, is set on a rock that shall not be quenched is because you come from a visionary pastor and leader who plays a trail that all you got to do is follow the path. Uh, yes, you can have water walk in faith all day. However, the rock of righteousness is the one who keeps you afloat. The rock of righteousness is the one who keeps you rooted and grounded. I heard church mama say, rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Because people will look at your success but not your seeds. They don't understand that the reason you have grown is because you sown through the struggle. You sown through the tears. Because you understand that, uh, yes, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy. God. Somebody must be praying for me. I feel my help coming on now. It's coming in the morning. You, you've been resourceful and remained rooted in God's word. Uh, yes, and, and I guarantee you, uh, yes, if you if you remain rooted, you will, if you stay faithful, you will be fruitful. Uh, yes, if you stay faithful over a few things, he said, I bless you to be ruler over many things. Uh, yes, people of God, my dear brothers and sisters, you have to get to a place of maturational development and discernment spiritually where you can recognize Jesus in any circumstance. I have to homiletically hop into this amazing text because when you look at the disciples in the text, they were troubled in the face of truth. Uh, yes, they were crying when they should have been rejoicing. Amen. Ah, yes. They thought it was a ghost, but they didn't realize it was the Son of God. Yeah. I got yeah. to see Jesus in the midst of my circumstance. And sometimes you've been through so many winds. You've been through uh, so many storms in life that you can't even trust something good when you see it coming. Uh, I've been through so, so many winds and so many waves. But I got to keep walking on the word. Uh, there's only two men on the planet who have ever walked on water. And that's Jesus and Peter. Uh, look at that neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to do what's never been done before. Uh, nobody in my family was a millionaire. Uh, but you ought to lay hands on yourself and say, I'm about to be the first one. Uh, Y'all ain't, ain't like that one. Uh, nobody did anything good in my hood. Uh, but I'm getting ready to do what's never been done before. Nobody has ever been debt free, but I'm about to do what's never been done before. Do I got a witness in the house? Nobody ever healed from their trauma, but I'm about to do what's never been done. Oh, God. What's never been done before because God's about to give me that and more. Oh, I cannot, oh yes, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. He's getting ready to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. Why are you thinking so small? Why are you expecting so little when you serve a God? thing to myself. I 
can imagine the disciples called Peter crazy. Negro, you got to be up out your mind. Nobody had ever walked on water, much less stepped out on the boat in the middle of the sea. Now, this ain't the shallow end. This ain't three feet deep where you could take the little ones with you. We're talking about hundreds, if not thousands, of feet deep into the sea. Oh, this Negro Peter has got to be crazy. Are you off your meds? I can see the disciples pulling Peter's robe and holding on to his leg. And I can see Peter turning around and saying, yo, let me go. Because the Lord called me to come. Uh, yes, I may not be and have as many degrees as you, but the Lord called me to come. I may not have grown up with two parents in the house, but the Lord called me to come. I may be in the hood, but God called me to do something good. I may not have as much money as you. My nickel may be fickle. My change may be strange. My credit may not be able to get it. My dime may not have the time. But God called me to Yes. Uh, yes, you got to make up in your mind and say, in the name of Jesus, depression let me go. The Lord called me to come. Sadness and sickness, you got to let me go. In the name of Jesus, fear is under my feet. Uh, the Lord called me to come. I can't stay here. The Lord called me there because Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. Uh, yes, Peter was the only one who answered the call of Jesus. Oh, yes, uh, uh, the, the harvest is right, but the labor is a few. Many are called, but few are chosen. And since the Lord is issuing the call, what's taking you so long to answer the call? You said, I'm a little bit too old now because I got some gray in my hair. No, that's just your wisdom coming out. You guys going to make your ladder greater. It ain't too late to be great. And it's not too early to get started. You keep living in fear and doubting yourself. You keep saying you're not qualified. And you're right because God don't call qualified people. But he qualifies those who he calls. You got to stop sending God to voicemail and answer his call that he placed on your life. Oh, somebody help me with this mic today. You're called to ministry. You're called to build. You're called to be more than a conqueror. You're called to say, I'm coming out of the, the enemy's hand. I'm called to do something. God said, I'm calling you, but you're not answering. I called you through your mama. I called you through your grandmama and grandfather. I called you out of toxic relationships. I called you to come out. Let them come. Oh, God. Somebody still ain't got it. Since we at let them come, why you ain't came yet? He calling you to come. I called you to come out of hiding. Come out of sadness. Come out of hurt and shame. Look at that neighbor today and tell him to get out the boat. I'm getting out of that boat of brokenness. I'm getting out of that boat of laziness. I'm getting out of that boat of feeling sorry for myself. I may be in a pit, but I will not be pitiful. I'm coming out of the boat of abuse. Uh, tell them to keep on walking through the winds. You got to keep on walking through the waves. You got to keep on walking through the storms and the struggles. You got to keep on walking through the headaches and the heartaches. You got to walk. And you got to walk through the misuse. You got to walk 
out of the abuse. You've got to walk out of your past and into your future. You've got to walk into your blessing. Look at that neighbor. Tell them, walk into your new house. Walk into your new car. Walk into new revelation. Walk into greater manifestation. Now feel like preaching in here. Walk while they talk. Oh God. Look at that neighbor. Tell them I know they talk it. But keep on walking. Because the talkers are nothing but publicizers. The gossipers are nothing but those who go hook you up. Walk while they talk. Let them keep talking and you keep on walking. I feel I feel a hand in my back now. I feel like preaching in here. I feel something pushing me now. I feel like preaching in the house. Let the winds blow. Let the storms come. But I'm walking by faith. I'm walking with the Lord on my side. And I cannot be denied. I'm walking with Jesus and the victory shall, it shall be mine. I've got the power in my spirit. I got the joy of the Lord. I got unspeakable faith and glory. Look at that neighbor today and tell him I double dare you to step out on the word. Because I've got the nerve to believe. I got the unmitigated goal to get to God. The disciples thought it was a ghost. And sometimes life has sent so many storms to haunt your life. But in this windstorm, God is busting through to blow a blessing in your direction. I know it's been so bad that you don't trust anybody, but this is your season to move. This is your season to trust God when you can't trace Him. To say, God, I trust you when I can't trace you. God, I trust you in this tempestuous storm. God, I trust you. I got to know God's voice so I can't detect his voice in the storm. But for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Can you find me on there? I'm right on that note right there. Can you find me on there? Because it's been so bad that you can't seemingly trust. But the Bible says that my sheep know my voice and the stranger, they will not follow. Look at that neighbor today and say, I know his voice. I know his voice to where he's calling me to come. Because Jesus hollered and said, it is I. It is not a ghost. Tell that neighbor today, all you need is a word from the Lord in your storm. It is I who is your healer. It is I who is your deliverer. It is I who is Jehovah Jireh. It is I who is Jehovah Shalom. It is I. Jehovah Rofika. It is I. Jehovah Sikhanu. It is I. Jehovah Nisi. It is I. Jehovah Makadish. It is I. Jesus, your way maker. It's Jesus, your provider. And you ought to step out of no weapon. Formed against me shall prosper. You ought to step out on weeping may endure for a night, but joy it's coming in the morning. Tell 
that neighbor today. My joy is here. My strength is here. My peace is here. My anointing is here. Peter didn't just walk on the water, but he walked on the word of the Lord. You got to take your eyes off the winds. Take your eyes off the waves. And keep your eyes on the one who controls the winds. Keep your eyes on the one who controls the waves. Tell that neighbor today, keep your eyes on Jesus. Walk on it. Walk with the power. Walk with the anointing. Walk until you have joy unspeakable. Walk through the headache. Walk through the heartache. Walk through the pain. Walk through the shame. Walk through the sickness. Walk through the suffering. Walk through the sadness. Walk through and say, I shall. I shall. Walk with power. I shall have my joy. Because over 2,000 years ago, they put him on a cross. He was hung up for my hang-ups. He was killed. He died one Friday night. He died late in the grave all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got up. Tell him, keep on walking. Keep on walking through it. Keep on walking. And be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will. God will. take care of you. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply standing in within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters, lifted me. Now safe am I. Somebody holler love. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, yeah. love lifted me. Yeah. Love lifted me. Yeah. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. That's you when you don't know Jesus today. In the pardon of your sin, you need another touch from him. You've been sinking far from the peaceful shore. It is the Lord who is telling you to come. Take your eye off the storm. Look at me. Yeah. Looking unto Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The author and the finish of your faith. And even yeah. if you sink, I'm here yes. to pick you up. Why don't you give God your heart and the preach in your hand today? Amen. That's you and you don't know Jesus. Why don't you come now? I believe if you clap, it'll endure somebody to come today. Yeah. Come to Jesus.